2023, the year where Classic Doom's Nightmare difficulty will go through a renaissance. Is it? No, I just made it up. But after playing Ultraviolence for so long, Nightmare is an awesome refreshment. Even the most hardened Ultraviolence pros may have to adjust their playstyle to survive the base games on Nightmare. So I did talk about Nightmare specific mechanics in previous videos. I've mentioned the aggressiveness, the projectile speed changes, turbo pinkies, respawning, and so forth. These were spurred out over several videos. This analysis will be about these mechanics too, but in deeper detail and neatly compiled into a single video. But first, let's go back in time. It's the year 1994. People all over the world are enjoying this new phenomenon called Doom. However, some super epic gamer nerds believe the game is too easy, even on ultraviolence, so they complain to id Software that the game's not challenging enough. id Software, unhappy with the complaints, started working on a difficulty that, in their eyes, was not even remotely fair. So, as a joke, when version 1.2 got released on February 17th, 1994, it revealed Nightmare difficulty to the world to shut up the ultraviolence babies. Hold on a second. Citation needed. Was Nightmare even added as a joke? Where we lied to all this time? There's only one way to find out. Dear John Romero, Nightmare. Joke difficulty? Yay or nay? Bye, Pumpkin Man. <gasps> hey, Decino. I had read some posts on Usenet back then with some players saying UV wasn't as tough as they had hoped it would be. Then others chimed in and said they wish there was a really hard mode in the game. And I thought, oh really? Okay then, you're all dead. I told John Carmack we need to make an even more difficult mode and call it Nightmare. The two things that will destroy all players is enemies firing twice as fast and respawning after 30 seconds. That would just ruin players who said the game was too easy. It wasn't meant to be fair or even finishable. I can't even get past E1M3 in Nightmare. Any level with backtracking would be almost impossible. So John implemented it and it was my idea for the double speed and respawning. Kevin did the menu art. I played Doom a lot before that edition and I could blast everything in the game without a problem and figured that's what it would take to be an impossible challenge to me. So there it is from the man himself. Thank you John Romero for the swift reply. In its eyes, it was a difficulty so tough, it would make most maps unfinishable. Ah, if only they knew. Enough backstory. Let's select Nightmare difficulty and see how it affects the game. When you select Nightmare through the menu, you will be greeted by a welcoming message. Are you sure? This skill level isn't even remotely fair. Press Y or N. Press Y and let the fun begin. Nightmare difficulty is basically ultraviolence with three additional mechanics. Fast monsters, respawning monsters, and double ammo pickups. In the original Doom executable, cheats were disabled except for it clef and it dt, but the source code commented out this restriction. Most source ports nowadays allow cheats on Nightmare. Let's talk about fast monsters first. Stating the obvious, they are aggressive. Normally, when an enemy wakes up, they must move a bit until they're able to attack. On Nightmare, this delay does not exist. Enemy spots you, they will immediately attack. This is not the case when playing with fast monsters and other difficulties, by the way. This is an exclusive change to Nightmare only. Normally, monsters must move a bit before they'll decide to do a ranged attack. On Nightmare, they don't need to. They will act like turrets and attack non-stop until you get out of their line of sight. They will only move a tiny bit if the distance check randomness fails. So if you're far away, they'll become less turret-like. Imps, pinkies, cacodemons, hell knights and barons behave differently on Nightmare difficulty too. Whenever you start a new game on Nightmare difficulty, a special condition is checked where the current skill level is compared to the newly selected one. If the current skill level is not Nightmare, and the new one is, then the game will alter the following. Pinkies will move and attack twice as fast, and their pain duration will be halved. Spectres too, as they're classified as Pinkies. Imp and Cacodemon fireballs will travel twice as fast. Baron of Hell and Hell Knight fireballs will travel 33% faster. The Pinky alterations are interesting though, as the game doesn't set the adjusted speed, but halves the current state durations in memory instead. When you start a new game that is at Nightmare difficulty, the game checks if the current one is Nightmare and restores the pinky state durations by doubling it again. This becomes a big problem when save games are involved. Check this out. We start a game on Nightmare. Our current skill level is not Nightmare, so this condition is true. The game halves the pinky state durations to make them go turbo. 
Let's make a save and start a new game on Ultraviolence. Our skill level was Nightmare, and now it's Ultraviolence, so restore the pinky state durations by doubling them again. Makes sense, right? Well, loading the Nightmare save sets the current skill level to Nightmare without altering the pinkies. That's only done if you start a new game. If we start the new Ultraviolence game again, the game sees that the current skill level is Nightmare, and the new one will be Ultraviolence. That means it will run this code and double the state durations again. Now we've got normal pinkies on Nightmare. Kind of weird, huh? There's no limit to this either, you can do this multiple times, with each new game started, halving the pinky speed over and over. At some point it will take literal minutes for pinkies to advance. You can also do this the other way around. Make a save on, let's say, Ultraviolence, start a new game on Nightmare, and reload the save. Start the new game on Nightmare again, and load your Ultraviolence save. This will run the pinky state duration halving code, turning turtle pinkies into instant death machines. After two loads, their state duration essentially becomes zero, so they will process all of their movements and attacks within a single frame. Picture it like this. The pinky freezes time, runs to the player, chomps them to death, and unfreezes time. If the super mega epic turtle pinky cannot reach the player, the game will freeze, as the pinky states are all running in a single tick, and the engine is unable to advance to their next game tick as long as the state duration is zero ticks. When the player is reachable and killed, the pinky changes its state to idle. This state is unaffected by Nightmare and has state durations that aren't zero, so the engine will process game ticks normally again. Most modern source ports fix this bug. Second mechanic, respawning. This is without a doubt the mechanic that causes the most stress, as it's completely unpredictable when an enemy will respawn. The logic behind respawning is fairly simple. Let's go through it step by step. When an entity has died and is on its final death sprite, it will start running a respawn check every game tick, which is every 1 35th of a second. First it checks if this dead thing is flagged as something that counts as a kill. What does not count as a kill? Players, lost souls, explosive barrels, and Romero's head. These will never respawn. Yes, even bosses like spider demons and cyber demons will respawn. Lost souls and barrels are removed from the game when their death animation ends, so they leave no corpse behind at all. No corpse means no respawn check. There is a way to still create lost soul and barrel corpses though, and that is done through crushers. If a lost soul or barrel is destroyed through a crusher before the death animation fully elapses, it will leave behind a pile of flattened meat. Yeah, it's weird, I know. The flattened meat however, does run the respawn logic, but stops here, since they still fail the kill counting condition. In Doom versions prior to Doom 2's release however, lost souls did actually count as kills, so if they were turned into a pancake, they were able to respawn. How horrible. Pain elementals are similar. They too are removed from the game when dead, but they leave no corpse behind. However, when crushed by a crusher before the death animation elapses, it does leave a corpse behind in the form of crushed giblets. Now the pain elemental does have a corpse, which means it can respawn. Gypped corpses will also respawn normally. Anyway, went a bit on a tangent there. The next condition we check is if the game's respawn monsters parameter is set. On Nightmare, this is always the case, but you can also enable respawning monsters outside Nightmare difficulty by launching the game with the dash respawn parameter. Here, the game increments the corpse move count variable. In this case, it will be used to track down how long the entity has been dead. If 12 seconds haven't elapsed yet, then don't try to respawn. Next condition. Is the game's timer a multiple of 32 game ticks? This timer increments every 1 35th of a second as long as the game is running. What this means is that a corpse will do a respawn check nearly every second. You can witness this when you nuke a large group of enemies, they will start respawning in a certain rhythm. And the final condition is RNG in their favor, or yours. If all previous conditions pass, then it will roll a random number between 0 and 255. Is this number less than or equal to 4? Then try respawning. In simpler terms, a corpse has around 2.6% chance of respawning per elapsed second. Logically, the longer a corpse has been rotting around, the odds of respawning successfully will accumulate. We can calculate how long it takes on average for a corpse to respawn. We can use a constant to represent the chance of respawning per second. With this variable, we will assign the chance of a corpse having respawned after x time has passed. We can try 50%, which yields approximately 26. 
Don't forget enemies need to be dead for at least 12 seconds before the respawn check is even done. So after around 38 seconds, there's a 50% chance the enemy has respawned. We can assume this is the average time required. If we enter 99%, we can assume the chances are extremely likely an enemy will respawn within 3 minutes. We can plot all of this into a nice graph to give you an idea how likely an enemy has respawned after a period of time has passed. In theory, a corpse may never respawn of course. It's all about chance after all. So we've passed all the conditions. Time to respawn, right? Not yet, there's one more check. When an enemy respawns, it will respawn at its original position, the position when maps started. If this position is occupied by the player or another solid entity, the respawn is denied and it will try the entire respawn check again. A respawning enemy will not telefrag you or other demons. Not even on map 30. If nothing is occupying the enemy's original spawn point, then do the following. Spawn two teleport fogs, one at the corpse and one at the enemy's original spawn point. The corpse's attributes such as type, original spawn point angle and ambush flags are all copied over to a new enemy, which is then spawned. The old enemy, so the corpse, is removed. A reaction time of 18 is set to ensure the enemy doesn't immediately attack you when they've respawned. Melee attacks are excluded though, as those don't care about the reaction time. The reaction time decreases every time the enemy moves. When the enemy is hurt, the reaction time immediately drops to zero, even if no pain state is caused. When it reaches zero, it will be able to do a ranged attack. If the sector the respawn in has no sound target set, then the enemy will remain asleep. If they are set to ambush and no players around, they will also remain asleep. If a sound target exists and the enemy is not set to ambush, they will immediately start roaming around when they respawn. Enemies spawned by the Icon of Sin don't have any spawn points set, so their spawn point defaults to X0, Y0. In Doom 2's case, the enemies will respawn somewhere out of bounds. Third and final mechanic, double ammo. This is to compensate for the extra firepower required to deal with the respawning enemies. Nothing complicated, every ammo pickup will yield twice the ammo, backpack included. Those energy cell packs look extra delicious on Nightmare. 200 cells per pickup, yum yum yum. There's a slight oversight however. Picking up shells shows a pickup message where it says you picked up 4 shells, but in reality it's 8. Same with rockets, you picked up a rocket, well no, actually it's 2. There are some Nightmare only map sets that fix this however. But then it gets screwy when you choose a difficulty that does not have double ammo. Nightmare needs more love. Its joke status did more harm than good, and it's time to end the stigma. The first two Doom games of Nightmare are surprisingly balanced. Yes, it will be challenging. Some maps will definitely kick your ass. Learn the map, create an efficient route, memorize the locations of medikits and armor. Hell, even stim packs will brighten your day on Nightmare. Responding enemies may sound stressful, but double ammo helps a lot dealing with them. Often you can benefit from the double ammo without spending it on responding demons at all if you make haste. Not all maps are about backtracking after all. Besides, if an enemy respawns nearby, they have a cooldown before they're able to attack. Watch those melee attacks though. Combat is viable. Just because they'll respawn doesn't mean you can stall them or break through them. To prevent tankier demons from respawning to full health, you can also damage them to near death from a distance and kill them with ease once you have to get past them. Nightmare is fast paced, requires quick thinking and reflexes and will rejuvenate your ultimate Doom and Doom 2 experience if you're sick and bored of ultraviolence. To up the challenge, you can also go for 100% secrets. Or, if you really hate yourself, you can go for 100% kills, secrets and items. This will maximize the amount of exploration and backtracking, truly bringing out that survival instinct. For kills, you don't have to kill every single enemy once. Killing respawned enemies to get 100% plus kills is allowed too. Now, I'm not saying you should try custom map sets on Nightmare from now on. Most maps will obviously not be balanced around it, but the more modest wads like the base games are playable and offer a fun challenge. The wad that made me love Nightmare difficulty is not even remotely fair. Which, despite the name, is a map set built exclusively for Nightmare that relies on Nightmare difficulty mechanics which offers a fun and fair challenge through unique looking levels with custom music, textures and lots of fire blue. I've made a couple of maps and music for it too, so don't mind the self plug. As of making this video, we are working hard on its third and final episode, so stay tuned for that one. The first two episodes are fully playable, there will be a download link in the description. Can we make 2023 the year Doom Sniper difficulty get some love? After nearly 30 years, I think it's time. 
Thanks for watching everyone. I would like to give a special thanks to Peter for convincing me Nightmare's fun as hell, and John Romero for the Nightmare Difficulty origin story. I would also like to thank my patrons and YouTube members, and the following Turbo Nerds. 19 Day, Agonizing Ophthalmologic Pain, Agonizing Oral Pain, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andrew Dunai, Andrew Riss, Andrew Yukimchak, Andri Niklin, aka Muckhauser, Anthony Sicko, Art Cox, Hashtag The Gaming Connoisseur, Beaks Make Me Coom, Ben Langley, Bitcore, Bofu, Bubski, Thunderstorm, Cyprian Rusen, Duki Lukum, Arian Sista, Erwin Wolf, Far, Florida Man, Francis T218, Frigi Duck, Green Knight 9000, Jeffrey Catalan, John Hopper, Joe Joseph Shans, Katsuna Teku, Kiryu Gorobets, Master Biggie, Matthias Sippert, Max Payne 67, Mr. Charon, Nighthawk 71, Old Man Han, Pete Peterson, Pockets Guns 2, Pyro Shi, Quay Gamer 632, Raven King, Riley, Robert Wakeley, Sandy Cheeks Cock Vacuum, Sean Anana, Skull Bladder, Space Duck, Spectre, Steak Jacobs, Stephen Bone, Stephen Halustic, Teko Kami, The Buzz CL, Thomas, Tim Goldberg, Timothy Collar, Turbine 2K5, Victoria, Watch Space Dandy, and Who's Ace? See you next time.